Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered in the hands of simple men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to be to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. And this is the gospel of our risen, risen, risen Lord.
We pray you invent our faith and help us to make the risen Christ evident through our words and our actions. Help us to believe that we may see, that others may see and believe. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. 
for everything that he has done for all of us. We are all very, truly blessed. Technical difficulty, sorry.
some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priest everything that had happened. When the chief priest had met with the elders and, and, and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say his disciples came during the night and stole he, him away while you, we were asleep, asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. And this is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we pray that you will talk to us, teach us, help us to understand your word. Open our hearts and minds, O oh Lord, to pay attention to what you have to say to us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The resurrection cover up. Cover up. We know that word, right? That, that, those two little words. We live in a time because of the media, social media. We are able to identify any cover up. At least we think we are. <laughs> At least we think we are able to identify all the cover up and everything. Unfortunately, that does not stop people and organizations nowadays, and even the government, from doing it. Mm -hmm. they, they keep doing it. Yeah. And then a, a few years later, then, and we're finding cover up of 30, 40 years ago. Because now we have all those uh, documents uh, uh, coming up and all that kind of thing. And it's, uh, it's a very interesting thing, and we live in a very interesting time. What we have this in, uh, here in this text is probably the most famous cover-up in history, or at least the attempt of doing it, is the most famous cover-up in history. Thank God it did not work. It did not work. At least it did not work for a lot of people. But there's still people that are saying, eh, I don't know. So let us take a look and see the main lessons and the main events on that cover up and see what we can learn with that. There's a few interesting lessons that we can learn with that. The first thing that we see in this event here is the soldier's report. The soldier's report is the first important information that we find here is the report about the event the resurrection of Jesus. And here is the verse, verse 11. It says, while the women were at their way, on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. Notice that some of those guards, not all of them, they went to the city, but they didn't go to the Roman authority. They went to the priests. Remember that was the priest that went to Pilate, uh, to Pilate and said, Look, this guy said that he will resurrect on the third day and you need to do something. So it was the, the priest and the chief priest that were pushing Pilate to do something. And he said, Okay, take a guard, put there. And a guard was kind of, a, those Romans, the, you don't mess it up with those Romans, okay? They were warriors. You don't mess it up with them. Can get cute to mess it up. Those guys kind of they they are kind of bloodthirsty. They kind of they used to fight, used to war, and now they are in in Jerusalem doing nothing. Kind of just kind of taking care of the the, 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 the street and, and, and small things and, and say so you don't mess it up with those guys. They were trained killers. So they put the guard there. And they sealed the whole thing. It was a kind of official thing. They seal everything. They stand there. It's a Roman thing. You don't mess it up with this stone here. If you touch it, you're going to be killed. So don't get close to that. But then the soldiers, when the thing happened, the soldiers went to the priest, not to 
Pilate and say, hey, something happened there. We don't understand, but something happened there. They went to the priest to report. And they report everything. That is a very important word that Matthew put here in this text. They reported to the chief priest everything that had happened. What that that means? It means that someone, a very powerful person, bright, moved the stone, and the guy walked out of there. And we were so afraid that we pass out. But we remember what happened. When we came back, the tomb is open, and we start running everything the chief priest knew from then on it's very important for us to understand that that Jesus came back to life remember their fears this guy said that he is going to come back on the third day we need to do something to stop it they knew that it happened the guards were the best witnesses that they could have, the best witnesses that they could have. They were not religious, they were there just to take care of the tomb, to protect the stone, nobody opens it, nobody gets close. That is that they are not religious, they are not disciples of Jesus at all. They're pagans. They, 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 They were not getting money from anybody on anything. That should be enough to prove that Jesus was the Messiah who they were expecting. The chief priest and the other priest and the teachers. Remember that they started involving everyone. So the soldiers report is very important here for us. Then they decide, okay, they have two options here. They say, okay, we can accept that yes, he is the Messiah. He resurrected. He is what he says that he is. Or we can do something. And they started creating a narrative. A cover up. That is the next process. Was created an explanation for the most significant fact. An event in history. We need to explain that. Because it's open. It's empty. And the guards, they don't care. They don't care about the Jews, our traditions, our theology. They don't care. They're going to say that it's empty. I'm sorry. And they're, they're going to... Those guards, they could get killed because of that. They could get killed because of that. They were there to guard the tomb. And the tomb was not guarded. They fail and they can get killed. They create, so the priests, they create the narrative. Verse 13 says, telling them, you are to say, this is what you have to say. Okay, let's, let's come up with an idea here. They had a committee, a cover-up committee. It's not a Presbyterian, probably, no, <laughs> no. But they formed a committee and said, we need to come up with a cover-up. What are we going to say? It happened. What we didn't want to happen, happened. The guy is out. The tomb is empty. And the guards are here. They saw the whole thing. They said, okay. Let's do this. Let's create a narrative. Tell the Tell the soldiers that, okay, this is what you have to say. His disciples came during the night and we stole him away while we were asleep. asleep. They create a narrative and told the soldiers, this is what you have to say. Let's rehearse here before you tell Pilate. Because if not, you're going to get to it. You're not going to tell the truth. That uh, being... Someone powerful came, rolled a stone, 
and then he walked out of there. We're going to blame somebody else. That is the point here. The cover up. We, we blame. Shift the blame. You, you blame somebody else. Don't tell the truth. Blame somebody else. And said we could not do anything. We were sleeping. This is a confession. You're going to get killed for that. You're, you're a guard. You're not supposed to sleep. You no, know, you tell that. You tell that. If they were sleeping, how did they know that there was a Jesus disciple that went there? How can you? Oh, yeah, oh, I wake up, I was, I thought I was dreaming. I saw Peter, maybe John, I don't know. Uh, yeah, they were different, but uh, I think that uh, at least the two of them I can identify. Come on, you were sleeping. How do you know that the disciples came? And he stole the body. It's kind of, it, it didn't make sense, it still don't make sense. But they create, this is the priest. You need to understand that, how serious this is. Those guys, they were preaching day and night. And they are waiting day and night for the Messiah. And the Messiah was right in front of them. And they could not see, and they could not accept. And now they have this empty tomb, and the guards, the Roman guards, coming and say it's empty. The guy got out, and they start creating this narrative. We're gonna, yeah, that's the story that we're gonna go for, and people will believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. We we're, we're gonna be able to. We're gonna put in every network in Jerusalem. Every network in Jerusalem will promote that story. And they will believe in that. We're going to make sure about that. <coughs> and then they did one more thing. Money and protection. Money and protection. As you could see, the narrative had a big hole there, right there in the middle. Huge. How could you pull it off that day? With those soldiers. Risking their lives. They are already in trouble because they didn't do anything to stop. The angels and Jesus, they are already in trouble. Now they have to lie. How are we going to do that? The chief priests offer money and protection for them. Verse 12 and 14 says this, When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised the plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money. A lot of money. This is how it works. This is how it works. And if this report, verse 14 says, if this report gets to the governor, and will get to the governor, that the, the tomb is empty, the stone was rolled up, out, and, and nobody's there. So if this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. Protection. This is how we're going to do it, and this is the cover-up works. With a lot of money, create a story to cover up with a lot of money and give protection to the people. Uh, nothing's going to happen. You're going to lie and we're going, to, we're going to take care of you. Don't worry. You were, you were good. And the guards were kind of, they, they were scared with the angels. Now they're scared with Pilate. They're scared. It, it must be a mess for those guys. Right? It, it must be crazy. That is the only way you can cover up, at least try to cover up a news so big like that. They offered the soldiers a large sum of money, but that would not be enough since the governor would want to know why and how they failed. They needed political and criminal protection, and they could lose their lives for failing. The chief priest had to be able to work with the governor to guarantee the safety of the soldiers and the cover-up. It's going to go one step now we need to deal with the with the governor. 
how this happened. But it's a political thing. I think that we can handle that. I think that we can handle that. At least they thought that they could. So, what we learn from this event that is important for us this morning here. What we learn that the chief priests did not want to believe. Period. Period. You can show all. You can show the tomb. You can show the angel. You can you can show whatever you can show. They do not want to believe. You can reason, you can have the best arguments, you can put science in there, you can put everything in there. You can put a camera on the tomb and then record the angels and the light and, and they're going to find a way to explain that. Because they do not want to believe. And that is the biggest trouble that we have, my friends, in the resurrection. Why they do not accept? <coughs> After 2,000 years, so many people, all the witnesses, everything, the Gospels, written, people talking, they still do not want to believe. The chief priest and the other elders and the other priests, they knew the truth about the resurrection of Jesus. They learned. And they learned from the guards themselves. Something happened. We saw light. And the other guy said, no, 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 it was two. Oh, yes, yes, you're right. Powerful beings. They came and they rolled that stone and they didn't, uh, they didn't even, it was not, it was easy for them. They just touched the stone and the stone moved. And, and the guy that we crucified, the guy that was crucified, two days later, walked out of there. We saw that. We didn't drink. We could not drink. We were guarding. We have a responsibility. So the priests, they knew the truth about the resurrection. But they decided to cover up anyway. They were willing to pay a lot of money and to play the politics card with pilots to cover up. Why? Because they did not want to believe. And the question for us, my friend, it's, it's the same question that they have here. This is, when we come to the resurrection, it's, 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 do, you, do you accept or you do not accept? Do you believe or you do not believe? If you believe, that will change your whole life because Jesus is alive. And, and that changes everything. If you don't believe, you need to come up with a cover-up. Maybe this one is not the best story. You need to come up with another story. And there is, I think, that six stories or explanations for the resurrection of the people are still trying to cover up. To come up with a, a story that will fit their minds. <coughs> because they do not want to believe that Jesus is alive. And that is the problem. So probably you know someone like that. I believe that you are here because you are celebrating the resurrection of Christ. So you believe that Christ is with was resurrected, but you know people that struggle with that. 
and they will try to find an explanation for that event to explain yes no, maybe not so those prayers they are willing to go all the way give a lot of money put pressure on the, on the political pressure do whatever we can do to cover up because we do not believe we don't want to believe that he is alive and I hope nobody here is in that side of the story trying to find an explanation for the resurrection of Jesus he is alive he is risen and he is risen indeed let us pray Father, we thank you for this day, for this time together, and for the resurrection of Jesus. And we pray that you will help us, help each one of us, to believe, to accept, to proclaim that Jesus is alive. It's risen from the dead. We pray in his name. You have the profession of faith that is based in Colossians. If I can call my paper here. There we go. So we are going to, to do it together. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. All things were created through him and for him. Christ is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head He is the beginning, the firstborn among the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. Thank you.
the wind is not cooperating. <laughs> Just a little, yes, right. Okay, there is a prayer there, and we are going to pray together that prayer. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have done. Help us to go for the life and death. Fellowship, and then 9:15 we will have our Sunday school class. So if you can stay, even if you are having your breakfast and you can stay, that's fine. We are going to have our Sunday school, and uh, you can drink and eat. No, there is no problem. Uh, we do that every Sunday. We have goodies there to uh, to, uh, to eat and coffee and tea. So uh, please stay for our uh, Sunday school. It's just a half hour from 9.15 to 10.45. Uh, so, 9.45, that's right, sorry, gee. Ah, okay, so I'm, I'm gonna pray for the food, so when you got there, you can start to uh, uh, serve yourself. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time together for the celebration of Jesus' resurrection. And we pray, O oh Lord, that uh, you will help us to continue to serve him, to continue to proclaim him, to continue to let him Lord of our lives. We pray for the food that we're going to eat, we pray for the fellowship, and we ask you to bless us in his name. And now may the Lord our Lord Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And our Father, who loved us so much to send Jesus and the Holy Spirit, who brings Jesus to our heart, be with you today and every day of your life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 